Hi there, and welcome to Order Up. This video is intended to give you a brief overview of how the driver app works. So, enjoy, and we look forward to getting you out on the road soon. So the first thing you're going to do is log into the driver app using your Order Up customer account information. Once you're into the app, you'll see a screen with this big red bar with a toggle switch across the top that says, Switch On to be Dispatch Deliveries. This is the screen where you'll actually see the dispatches as they come to you while you're available for deliveries. It's important to remember that this switch should be kept off unless you are scheduled to drive at that time. We'll get into the specifics of that later on. We're going to go through a few different features in the app that are important to your success as a driver partner, like scheduling and setting your preferences. Then we'll do a test delivery so you can get a feel for what the actual delivery experience is like. So if you look to the top left corner of the screen and click this small black hamburger, you'll see a sidebar open up with different pages to click on. The first, titled Deliveries, will simply take you back to the main screen where you'll be able to manage current deliveries if you're working at that time. The second button will take you to your profile. On this page, you'll see a colored geometric icon that is where your profile photo will be displayed once you upload one. To change this image, scroll down to the link that says Update Gravatar. Here, you can create an account and manage your profile photo. Below your photo is your lifetime delivery count, a link to the points leaderboard, and some weekly metrics for you to keep track of. The points leaderboard is where drivers can see their place in the weekly boost competition for extra payout bonuses. The metrics below that link are how many deliveries you've completed so far this week, your reliability score, and your accept rate. These values are updated daily at 5 a.m. You can also view these stats as well as the leaderboard rankings from the prior week. While we're on this screen, a quick note about the Boost program, which we referred to a minute ago. Boost is a weekly competition that approved drivers can opt into. Drivers earn points for completed deliveries, with more points associated to those deliveries that are completed during our busiest times. The leaderboard you just saw shows where each driver stands at any point throughout the week. The purse is paid out to qualified drivers kind of like a golf tournament or a horse race. The higher the place you earn, the more money you get. In order to qualify for Boost, a driver must 1. Possess a minimum 90% reliability score at the end of that week's competition, 2. Possess a 90% accept rate at the end of that week's competition, and 3. Have at least one reserved block before the competition week begins. And don't worry, if you miss one week, you can always try again the next. Finally, below that is where you can update some of your basic account information, such as your first and last name and phone number. If you do update your phone number, be sure to reach out to your local delivery operations manager and let them know. If you go back to the upper left hand corner and click the little hamburger icon once again, and then click history, you'll be taken to a page where you can see the details from each delivery you've completed. These details include the date and time of completion, the name of the restaurant, the order number, and how much you earned. You can scroll up and down on the page to see all of your deliveries. If you click back on the hamburger icon and then click schedule, you guessed it, you'll be taken to the schedule. There's a color system to each half hour block on the schedule. You can also see the days of the week across the top. If the hour block is gray, that means that there's no delivery service during that hour. If it's white, that means we're in need of drivers and you're welcome to claim that hour. You can claim as many as you're able to or however many are available throughout the week. When you choose an hour, you'll see a confirmation that says, are you sure you want to claim this? and you'll click either yes or no. This is so that if you accidentally click the block, it won't automatically register it to your schedule. If the block is blue, that means we already have enough drivers at that time, but you're welcome to add yourself to the wait pool. What this means is that the system will notify you and everyone else in the wait pool if another driver takes themselves off the schedule for that block. You can be notified of such activity via text message or email or both if you like. The wait pool is a great way to manage your schedule more effectively and increase your earnings each week. The wait pool, like any available hours, are first come, first served. If the block is green, that means that you're scheduled to drive that half hour. This can come from hours that you've input as available, or if you've claimed an available block that another driver has dropped. And just to note, the times that you see on the schedule are the beginning of the half hour. So in other words, if it says 10 a.m., that really means you'd be driving from 10 a.m. until 10.30 a.m. You'll see right above the days of the week that there's another button that says next week. This will show you next week's schedule, once it's been published by the system and approved by the local operations manager. Again, that happens on Thursdays for the following week. Next, we're going to take you through the availability page. So once again, if you click the hamburger in the upper left hand corner to bring back that drop down menu, you can select availability directly under schedule. This is where you'll input the hours that you're available to work for the following week. And you'll do this anytime between Monday and Wednesday of each week. 
So, for example, if it's Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of a given week, you'll input your availability for the following week by Wednesday night at midnight. That way, the system will be able to see what your availability is for the following Monday through Sunday, 7 to 10 days ahead of time. You can simply drag your finger across the blocks of hours that you're available. You can also copy individual days or the entire week from a previous week if your availability remains the same. It's important to remember that these are not guaranteed hours that you'll receive. This is just simply telling the system, hey, I can work Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 5 to 9 p.m., or Tuesdays and Thursdays at lunch, or every day all the time. Whatever your schedule allows for, this is where you would input that availability. It's like the big bucket of possible hours that you can drive. Each week, the system will take a look at the availability of all the drivers and build the entire schedule around that. If you click back on the burger drop-down bar, the next section is services. Here, you'll see information regarding some of the vendors that we work with. The first, Honk for Help, is an app that provides roadside assistance that you can download straight from the driver app. We've secured a 15% discount on all services by entering the code listed in the description. The second section you'll see on this page is titled Driver Hot Slash Cold and Pizza Bag Vendors. If you opt to purchase your own hot or cold bags instead of leasing them from OrderUp, we've provided links to vendors who sell bags that meet the OrderUp specifications. Finally, if you click once more on the burger in the upper left hand corner to bring out the drop down menu, you can select settings. So here, we'll go line by line and explain what each of these features are for. The first two buttons are administrative tasks that must be completed in order for your driver account to be approved. The first will take you to the contents of the driver agreement. We encourage you to take the time to read through the agreement before signing in. The second button will take you to the driver documents page. Here is where you will upload pictures of your license, insurance, registration, and payment details, as well as your taxpayer details. In addition to uploading photos, we ask that you input a series of details for each document so that we can verify their validity. If you go back to the settings page, you can go ahead and click that third blue box next to our preferences. This is simply umbrella parameters for the system and for your local operations manager to consider as the schedule is being built. It allows you to input the minimum number of hours you'd like to work, the maximum number of hours you'd like to work, and the minimum number of hours you'd like to work at any given time. So, for example, if you live in the zone and are willing to work just one single hour, that's great. We'd love for you to be able to do that. If you need to travel to the zone, however, and it takes you 20 to 30 minutes to get there, and you only want to work if you can for at least three hours at a time, this is where you would input that in that third box to give the system and the local operations manager those parameters about your preferences. So just to reiterate, by setting these hour preferences, it's not a clear guarantee that you will be given the maximum number of hours you say that you're willing to work. However, it is a guarantee that you You can save these inputs at the bottom and then go back to the settings page for more information. The next feature you can click on on the settings page is bag preferences. Here is where you'll select whether or not you will be providing your own hot and cold bags or if you'll be leasing them through order up. If you select provide own bag and then click submit, you will be prompted to head back to the driver documents section and upload images and receipts for the hot slash cold and pizza bags under driver bags. If you select Lease Bag, a confirmation will pop up letting you know that you will be charged $1 per week for the bags. You can then click Submit and head back to the main settings page. The next couple of things on the settings page are email notifications. We suggest that you leave these on. We don't send you lots of emails, but when we do, they are important, such as reminders about availability and notifications of when the schedule has been published. Next, confirmation dialogues are important in order to confirm that what you're clicking on throughout the delivery process is something that you actually want to click on. So, for example, if you're claiming an hour, we want to make sure that you do want it in fact, because if you claim it by accident and then you need to reject it, that may affect your reliability score negatively. So we would encourage you to keep these confirmation dialogues switched to on in order to avoid unnecessary mistakes. The next switch, which says send SMS and push notifications, will ensure that you receive both text and push notifications throughout the different steps of the delivery process. We'd also encourage you to keep this switched on in order to ensure that you don't miss out on any important information regarding your deliveries. Below that, you have the option of choosing how you want to be notified for wait pool hours that have become available. You can select email, SMS, or both. We'd encourage you to select both SMS and email in order to better your chances of claiming the hours before other drivers do. Lastly, the final buttons on the settings page allow you to do a couple of different things. The first is to try test delivery, which we'll do in a second. We also have a really great frequently asked questions section that has tons of information. We encourage you to look here first with any questions that you might have, either before or after your first delivery. 
We're constantly updating this resource, so feel free to check back often. Finally, if you click the hamburger, the last button on the drop-down bar is to sign out. We don't often see the need for drivers to sign out very frequently. Only sometimes do you need to force quit the app if it's acting a little funny. But if for some reason you do need to sign out, you can do so here, and it will take you back to the login screen. So now that we've given you a taste of what the driver app includes, let's do a couple of test deliveries with grouped orders to show you the optimized delivery screen, where you'll be able to see delivery steps for multiple orders integrated into one single timeline view. First, you'll notice a swipe to accept or reject notification at the top of the screen. In this banner notification, you'll be able to see the name of the restaurant, of the incoming order, and how much longer you have to accept the delivery, counting down from three minutes. Simply swipe right to accept, and if you need to, swipe left to reject. As you swipe in either direction, you'll see the text mimic the action you're about to take. There won't be a confirmation here, so please be mindful of which way you're swiping. Once you've accepted multiple orders, aka grouped orders, you'll be presented with the next step in the delivery at the top of the screen, followed by confirming that the step is complete at the bottom of the screen. This optimized view removes the guessing game of which step to complete next when you have multiple orders. We'll simply present the next step to you. So before I go ahead and complete that I'm at the restaurant by swiping right at the bottom of the screen, I wanted to point out that you can access the in-app navigation tool by clicking the address for the restaurant. I'll hold off on doing that for now and show you the navigation tool when we're on our way to the customer. So after I've swiped the delivery step complete, you'll notice that the optimized timeline view moves up, so you'll always see your next delivery step pinned to the top of the screen with the past delivery steps grayed out. When you're in the optimized view, you'll also be able to toggle into individual deliveries if you'd prefer not to use the optimized timeline view. So if you have two deliveries and there's a next step in the optimized timeline, but you'd rather complete the other step, you can complete it in the single order view. The single order view will also show you all of the delivery steps for that order from start to finish. Alright, so I've indicated that I'm at the restaurant, so let's take a look at how to indicate that you have all of the food in the order. There are two steps to confirm that you have all the food. First, click Yep, It's Ready, and once you confirm that the food is in fact ready, we're then going to ask if all of the other items for the order are there. If you indicate that the food isn't ready, you'll simply have the option to then indicate when it is ready. The reason for the second confirmation is to help you make sure that you aren't missing anything with the order, and is especially useful if you have a large order. The checklist feature is especially useful for this, which allows you to check items off. You'll notice that what you see in this screen mimics what you see when you click View Full Order Details. In addition to seeing order items, you can also contact the customer via phone or text, and you can also see the special instructions for the order as well. Alright, so back to completing the order. Once we've indicated that we've got all the food, we'll see where we're delivering the food to. This means seeing the customer's name as well as their address. If you need to see the customer's address earlier than this step, you can always access it in this single order view. So let's try clicking the address and using the new in-app navigation tool. With this new tool, we've eliminated the hassle of you having to go back and forth between the app and a third-party navigation app such as Waze or Google Maps. The in-app navigation will also provide you with an estimated arrival time, how long the trip should take, and how far the customer or restaurant is away from you. When you go into the navigation screen, you'll first see the top-down view. This will show the entire route from where you are now to the restaurant or customer. At the top of the screen, you'll also see the navigation steps. By clicking into this bar, you'll be able to see all of the directions to reach the address. So back in the top-down view, I'm ready to click into the turn-by-turn -turn directions. I can do so by clicking the button at the bottom right of the screen showing the arrow. You can then use these turn-by-turn -turn directions to get to your destination. You can also access other navigation apps by clicking in the top right of the screen. So going back into the order now, let's pretend we are now arriving at the customer's address. You may have noticed a little life preserver in the top right of the screen throughout the order. This is known as the driver lifeline, your portal to reporting issues to the driver support team. With the Driver Lifeline, you can now quickly submit help requests to support by clicking a few buttons to let them know what's wrong with your order at any given time. By using the Lifeline feature, support agents will receive information they need quickly and efficiently to resolve issues so that you can get back to completing your deliveries. So let's look at the different requests we can send into support. Depending on what delivery step you're in, you'll only be presented with issues that can arise at that step. For example, because we're on our way to the customer, we wouldn't see an option to input that the restaurant is closed. However, at any delivery step, you'll see an option here to reject the order as well as go back a step. So, if for any reason you can't complete an order, you can click here. Go back a step is directly beneath it and again will be shown in the driver lifeline no matter what delivery step you're at. 
So let's pretend that, the, that we're having trouble getting in touch with the customer. I'll go ahead and select the customer isn't responding. If none of the reasons are listed, hit other, but please try and select the specific reason to ensure that support can fix the problem as quickly as possible. This will take me to a new screen where I can add any additional information before submitting my lifeline request. So now that I've hit the submit button, a message will pop up letting me know that support has received my request and that they'll be in touch soon. Support will then respond with a resolution via text message, and if they need more information from you, you'll continue the conversation over text message. So let's pretend that we got in touch with the customer and they're at their residence. Once I drop off the food, I'll hit delivery complete. Here you'll see a delivery complete screen showing how much you earned and how many points you received for that delivery. Then just hit back to deliveries and you'll go back to the home screen. We would just like to note that completing a single order is even easier than what we just walked you through. Not all of your orders will be grouped. Most drivers complete single orders one at a time, although some markets do have a higher percentage of grouped orders. It really depends on how many customers are ordering at once, where the orders are coming from, and where they're being delivered to, and also how many drivers are working at that time. So once you've completed the last delivery of the day, you'll go back to the drop-down bar and switch the green toggle button under your Gravatar back to off and enjoy the rest of your day.